to talk about the disciplinary action committee which we call the DAC in IIT Bombay, famously called the DISCO in IIT Delhi. Of late, we think that the number of DAC cases has risen and the student community is extremely interested to know more about DAC. To talk to us about the DAC, we cannot have a better person than Professor Yajnik, the Dean of Student Affairs. Professor Yajnik, thank you very much for accepting to interview for us. Sir, the first question we want to ask was, sir, do you think there is apparently a rise in the number of DAC cases? And sir, what would you attribute this rise, if at all, to? And how is the institute tackling it? I don't think there is any visible increase as such. The number of students itself has gone up substantially. And uh, maybe one particular case that was reported to DAC had to do with one classroom where 30 people gave the biometric attendance and then were not present later in the class. So that number may look big, but it was just one episode. So overall, I don't think the number has increased, uh, you know, disproportionately. From your experience now, close to two years as Dean SA and before that, so can you tell our viewers a little bit about the profile of cases which come to DAC? Well, profile of cases that reach DAC are primarily where it looks that the uh, attempt was deliberate, premeditated and uh, tends to actually undermine the academic atmosphere of the institute. Apart from academic malpractices, are, are there all kinds of cases which come to DAC? Maybe those in the hostel or maybe their conduct outside the campus even? Well, outside the campus conduct has not yet come in the last two years. But hostel related issues where there were thefts carried out by somebody or this kind of things have come up. Sir, is it true that uh, the administration these days wants the deterrence to heighten up and therefore it has taken a conscious decision to be much stricter than before? I think um, there may, I have been associated with this process for two years and um, I don't think we have significantly heightened the punishment. But, you know, if you begin to discuss the punishment, if you think in very broad sense, if somebody is very deliberately and in a cunning way resorting to dishonest means, he actually doesn't belong to IIT. So the DAC action is meant as a warning that this kind of behavior is taking you towards a situation where you would be found unfit to continue at IIT. So in that spirit, I think people should take the punishment. Sir, can you tell us, viewers a little bit about the composition of the committee in itself? And within that, what is the role of the student representative as you see it? The composition has been decided uh, from a long time, maybe 20 years ago, when the whole concept was uh, formalized within the statutes of IIT. And it has, uh, at least the dean of academic, if it is an academic offense, and dean of student, if it is a hostel or general behavior related offense. Um, head of department, if it is academic offense, and the instructor concerned, or the warden of the hostel, when uh, it's a hostel or accommodation related offense. And then there is General Secretary Academic Affairs or General Secretary Hostel Affairs also present. Uh, the way we think of it is that they provide a student point of view to the whole committee, um, which may be missed by the committee sometimes. By the way, the committee, the, the process of um, uh, the inquiry during DAC tends to be not very formal one. It is essentially asking the student, what do you think, what is your own opinion, what you have done, this is the situation with which you are caught, etc. And the student usually uh, is quite forthright about saying what has happened. Most of them feel guilty about what has happened and so on. So the role of the student at that point is later when deliberations occur, if the so committee tries to go over everything, the conversation we have had, the evidence we have had, and so on. And uh, in case the committee is missing something that is uniquely what a student might be able to perceive, uh, 
uh, or when a punishment is thought about what all its implications can be and how students may perceive it. So that is the kind of role the general secretary has. Sir, to confirm, uh, so because a lot of uh, students think that the general secretary who is sitting there uh, is, is more of in a defending role to represent the student. Sir, while you mean to, while you seem to say that uh, it is more of a mediator to give some sort of clarity from the student's perspective and not as a lawyer perhaps. GSEC there is not a lawyer. Uh, as I said, it is not a formal or a legal process. It is formal in the sense mandated by the Senate, but it is not a legal process. So there is no need for a lawyer and we do discourage any kind of tutoring by lawyer. You have to understand that this is uh, this is really not like the civil code or criminal code or anything like that. This is an action by the teachers of the institute to ensure that uh, students' behavior remains under check and to demonstrate to rest of the students that such behavior does not get go unchecked and so on. So one should not try to compare it to you know public legal processes and so on sir at this point of time uh, sir can you give a short description to our viewers as to how a dac case proceeds from start to end in a in a general sense so in a general sense as i said uh, the matter is put to the student himself or herself and ask what is their opinion or whether they want to add something or whether they want to um, you know explain what has happened so it is a fairly informal process, mostly a discussion between the committee and the students. But that said, I don't think it is something that majority of students have to worry about. It's not like uh, your uh, job interview process. These are extreme cases and uh, only if you are <laughs> involved in malpractice should you worry about what happens in the DAC. Sir, now that you've mentioned job interviews, sir, a lot of students seem to think that uh, the Dean SA office shows the DAC records to the companies here when they come for placements. Many HR uh, departments in companies have a thorough background check and that the Dean SA office cooperates in that. Sir, is this true? It's an interesting thought, you know, we could, uh, we could <laughs> try to get the student to donate some money to alumni association or something uh, in exchange, but no, obviously that is not the case. Uh, DAC uh, activity is strictly confidential. In fact, nobody other than the student himself and the committee is privy to what happens there. So there is no such fear. I mean, IIT has no interest in trying to undermine a uh, misdemeanor by the student that occurred within our walls. You know, we are not there to reveal it to the public. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, of late we have seen that DAC has also awarded semester drops. And the student community does not really understand what happened. In, in such a sense, the student community as, as a unit perceives the DAC to be not transparent at all. So do you think the transparency in DAC should be increased? And what are your views on that? Again, I would say it is not like process of selection in JEE that every single person has to worry and there should be transparency. These are people who admittedly on from their own admission have committed a misdemeanor i can assure you that the committee of uh, essentially teachers his own teachers is there to judge him and try to pass a judgment on him it is done with all compassion and fairness and i don't think that any transparency is required beyond that and in fact student representative is also present there so it is not as if them versus us it is it is some wise men from the community trying to bring you back on track. So I don't think that there is any further change needed to this proceeding. Sir, to conclude, is there any message you would want to give to the student community at large? Well, I would simply say that, you know, you should have, uh, you should have enough academic preparation that you should not have to think about re resorting to academic dishonesty. Partly because it really undermines you yourself in your own eyes and um, it vitiates the overall atmosphere and mandate of the institute. Uh, you will spend more time worrying about how to get past this or that, you know, you, you, that energy could in fact be diverted to academics. So I think instead of worrying about uh, 
clinical details of what happens in case you eventually got caught and so on. That's that's really not the discussion at all. You should have maybe a frank discussion with your instructor about how your exam is conducted, what is expected of you in the exam and what you would like to be tested on, what you think you are getting out of the course and uh, what you would be able to best bring out in a limited time exam or maybe another uh, suggest another format of the exam. But it is better to start this kind of discussion than resorting to underhand tactics. Thank you for watching. A detailed article about the disciplinary action committee will come to you in Inside 16.1 coming to your doorstep middle of next week. Thank you very much.